Okay, let us look at another example. This time we have a force of 200 pounds and we want to find the components with respect to the x and y axis, the regular x and y axis, which they're 90 degrees apart. This is a rectangular coordinate system. And they also want us to find it with respect to an arbitrary axis called x prime, which is not the main axis, it's an arbitrary uh, axis. And sometimes that is used to find uh, forces with respect to um, a point, with respect to a direction, so that you know um, what happens if you design stuff with respect to that direction. So that we see that we will see that more um, in detail later on. But for now, we want to know how to compute the forces with respect to x and y, which we already know. The new concept here is how to compute it with respect to a new arbitrary axis. Okay, so the first thing is that in this case, we're going to have 200 pounds of force. Remember that in international system of units, force is in newtons. And in imperial system of, un of units is in pounds. Forces are in pound force. This is not the same as pound weight. Which is the one the weight you get on your on the scale when you weigh something. The same thing that when you use a scale in grams, the weight newtons is not the same thing as grams or kilograms. That's not the same thing. Uh, if you remember, this is respect to mass, so the amount of mass, and newtons is with respect to an acceleration. So, a mass could weigh could have a force on Earth because of the gravity of the Earth, but a completely different force on the Moon or Mars because the gravities are different. So pound pound weight and pound force is not the same thing. So please don't, don't get confused. This is a very common mistake. So um, 200 pound force is not the same as 200 pound, 200 pounds of what? Of the weight of the mass of a body. Okay. So they're asking us to compute the components and we already know how to do that part. It's pretty simple. The first thing we have to do is with respect to X and Y, we know that there's a force with respect to X and there's a force with respect to Y. And that is because, what other colors do we have? Mm, let's do blue again. That is because or was the yellow? Yeah, that is because this is hopeless, not too difficult to see. Okay, so this is with respect to x and that vertical component with respect to y. Okay, so evidently we already know how to do this part. We're just gonna do 200 pound force times cosine of 40 degrees and the y component has a value of 200 pounds force times the sine of 40 degrees go ahead and use your calculator and this will give you something close to approximately 153 pounds and this is 129 pounds. So what this means, remember, is that you have a main force is 200, but that main force has components with respect to a coordinate axis. Otherwise, it will be just flowing around and we have to ground that force. We have to place it somewhere. In order to place it, we can basically say, okay, in X and Y, those components are 153 and 129. Notice that is larger uh, uh, in the x direction than the y direction. The, the values are larger because the angle um, is 40, right? So at 45 will be the same value in x and y, and if it's greater than 45, it will be a greater value of um, the component will be larger for the y component. So that's another thing that you can check. Okay.
the next thing we want to do is be able to find so that's the first part the post with respect to x and with respect to y done the second thing we want to do is the force with respect to x prime so for that we're going to have to build the vector that corresponds to it so so let's do with respect to x prime so let's build that we have a force of 200 that's the vector that was given and then we have a little we have an angle here of 40 degrees and then an angle of 30 degrees so that total at 40 plus 30 is 70 so we have 70 degrees and with respect to x prime and then the vertical the vertical would be the component of y f f y f x and f, f x prime f x prime and f y prime uh, no f y it's just there's no y prime it's the same y so this is a vertical line parallel to this axis and then we have a new x axis x prime which is with respect to um, the x-axis that we had previous so then we don't have the x-axis anymore we're going to use the x prime as the new axis so if you notice since this is 40 this angle right here is 50 because in between x and y we have 90 degrees always that's the definition of a partition coordinate plane x and y are always perpendicular so if this is 40 that is 50 50 plus 40 90. therefore if you remember your trigonometry or your geometry this right here will also be 50. okay because this is 90 obviously so that angle is the same as this angle which is 50 degrees okay and now if we do what would be this angle so it's going to be 180 minus 70 minus 50 which is this is equal to 60 degrees so this angle is 60 degrees okay let's check 60 plus 50 plus 70, 180, there you go. So, um, yep, we have, that is, um, so we have a 60, a 50, and a 70 degree triangle right here. So, if they're asking us for this component, and we already have this, which is 200, that we know, we already have Fy, which is the same component as before. This is the same Fy, because it's the component with respect to the y direction, which is right here. And the only thing we have to do next is to find the F x prime. And for that, we're gonna use the sine law. Remember, that is the four, so, is it very picky here? If you have hypotenuse A, or uh, length A, B and C. The angle opposite to it corresponds to the sine law and it's a ratio of A divided by the sine of the angle is equal to B over the sine of the angle equals to C divided by the sine of the angle. So this is capital C, capital B, capital A and the angles are lowercase. So in this case we have the same thing. We have that this is 50 Therefore, what we need to find is f x prime divided by sine of 50 degrees is equal to, and then we can use either the force or the component. We can use 200, which was the force given, 
is divided by sine of 60. We're just applying we're just applying the sine rule. Okay, so if you did do go ahead and do this computation, use your calculator to get familiar with the calculator. Even I can even I make mistakes sometimes with this type of thing. So it's gonna be 200 times sine of 50 divided by sorry and then equals to fx prime equals to f x prime times sine of sixty therefore of 60 so fx equals fx prime I mean equals 200 times sine of 50 divided by sine of 60 which is equal to 177 pounds so notice that is bigger than the um, original with x because the angle is larger. Okay, and again, why do you want this? Because a lot of times you want to be able to find a principle or a new axis where things are going to be rotated at, where things are going to be transformed to, mirror to, reflect to. So you're familiar with um, CAD, like software to design parts. You remember that you can do translation and rotations Sometimes you want to rotate parts. So when you rotate a part, the force is going to have a component that is going to be deforming the part. So the force is not going to be the same if you rotate the part. Once you rotate the part to a new axis, then the force is going to be um, changed. And this is how you compute that force change or the changes in forces once you start modifying um, the parts. Again, with a reflection, with a translation, uh, etc. Okay, so in this case, when this Fy, this Fy is actually not the same as this. I apologize, I said something that is not true. This Fy is not the same as this because this corresponds to a triangle where Fy is bound by a degree by 40 and 50 and 90 degrees this fy now is bound by 50 70 and 60 degrees okay so we actually need to find the fy and the fy is the same way we do it before so before we try to find it let's do what um our ratios so Fy divided by, it should have been Fy prime maybe, but, but okay, we understand the concept is uh, Fy because F Y is still very cool. It didn't change any angle. So it's still, it's still parallel to the vertical direction. So Y is the same. It's just that force with respect to Y for this new, for these force, for the, the system of forces, for these components are going to be different because the, as I said, the angles, are changing so let's do it F Fy divided by opposite is sine of sine is equal to let's use 200 again which is the value that is given 200 over sine of 60 all right so Fy equals 200 times sine of 70 degrees divided by sine of 60 degrees. Okay, if you calculate it for that, it's 200 times sine of 70 divided by sine of 60. Remember to use great, um, degrees, not gradient, not radians. And um, what you need to do is compute that in degrees and you have a value of 217 pounds of force. So this example is very useful to let you know, A, that there are different types of 
systems of units. In imperial system of units, you use pound force. In international system of units, you use Newton. Also, when a force is computed with a, or with respect to an arbitrary axis, you can use the sign rule to find it. And the components x and y are related to the angle of the force with respect to the axis. Therefore, if a quiz question, if an exam question, I ask you if the f y, the force in y for this configuration up here is the same for this configuration down here, the answer is no, because the angles with respect to the force are changing. We're using different coordinate axis for the um, computations. And don't get confused, even though the main axes are x and y, which are the coordinate axes, you can compute forces with respect to any other axis. And they're called arbitrary axes. Uh, axis. Okay, and that is because if you want to say you have, I don't know, um, what could be a good example? If you have a cube, you know, uh, something that is not a regular shape. If you have, I don't know, uh, an airplane wing. Okay. And the, and the airplane rotates, the forces that are applied to the system, to the wing, for instance, are not the same when you start rotating in different directions, rotating and translating. Because here, if you go straight, you can only have, you usually just have the drag force and the lift forces. But when you start rotating, you can have other um, types of forces from vortices and from centripetal centripetal forces, etc. So you can find forces with respect. It, it's not exactly the same example, right? Because here you might still have the same axis, x, y. But what I'm getting at, if you want to, in your model, rotate this airplane and put now the axis, the airplane being um, in, in, I don't know, in a different configuration. So now the axis, the, the, the airplane is going to be in a different configuration, kind of like going up. Okay. And then you want to change the axis. Or better yet, if you want to change the axis, the, the airplane is going to stay the same, but you want to change the axis to something like that. Then, that is a good example because these forces of the wind, of the air, are going to be different because of the axis, the coordinate axis that you're using. So if your force is computed with respect to a orthogonal axis, like x and y right here, where x is horizontal and y is perpendicular, then you're gonna have a set of forces on your wing. Okay, let's do that with the right column. From here, you can derive the right forces. But if you have a set of no coordinates, then you're going to have a set of new forces because the coordinate system has been rotated. Okay? So um, that example is very useful in terms of helping you see how to translate forces across the different coordinate systems.